right, everyone. Hope you're well. So, the ginger mead is done. It's finished. It did take a bit longer than it was supposed to, because, well, it got cold and I don't use heat belts. So the yeast went dormant, but as soon as it warmed up enough, the yeast carried on and finished. So, uh, good for them. Now, if you haven't seen the part one video, I will stick the link at the top so uh, you can see it. Now, as it stands, this mead is perfectly good to drink. I mean, it's, it's done, it's finished, and yeah, that's cool. We could bottle this up and drink it, but we're not gonna do that. Now, the reason is we use the value honey. Now, I've already used value honey to make value mead, the cheapest mead you could possibly ever make. And it was actually really quite nice. You know, it had those floral notes that you'd kind of expect in a more expensive honey. It had those honey notes, which you would expect in honey, and it was actually very, very nice to drink. But it's not an expensive honey. I mean, it's a cheap honey. The flavors were there, but they weren't in your face. That's, that's the best way how to say it. They were kind of mild. So using freezer refraction, we're hopefully gonna concentrate all of the flavors in here. Now that includes the honey flavors and also the ginger flavors. So I made sure to add in half the amount of ginger that I would have normally done, which sounds pretty cool. So I suppose we should stop talking and uh, get right into it. So I've got my hydrometer. Let's take a reading. There we go. Just give that a second to work itself out. So a hydrometer has finished bobbing about doing weird stuff like it does. And it is reading right at one. So that means our final gravity, our final reading, this lovely mead is around 6%. Close enough for home brewing needs, because well, we don't need to be that exact. Good enough, so I need to take this hydrometer out. Epic fail. Take this hydrometer out. It's not bad. And now I'm just going to pour a little bit because I can. I mean, I want to. And we're doing something a little bit different than normal. Normally we'd be siphoning this, but because we're using freeze refraction, we don't have to because this isn't finished yet. So I just want to pour. Oh, I just want to pour myself a little bit out. Just, just a little glow. Carefully put it back there. If we get a little bit of sediment in the bottles, it's okay because we're going to be ice filtering it. So, uh, I mean, it has a mild color to it. It doesn't smell bad, actually. It smells a little bit dry for my liking. I'd like it somewhere around 110, 115 on the hydrometer if I was using sugar. So, cheers. It's pretty drinkable. The ginger's are there. A little bit dry for my liking, but it is drinkable as it is. Mmm. Anyway, yeah, a little dry. So, instead of using the usual siphons, because we're going to be adding a step into it, I'm going to be using a funnel. One, because I can't get these two things in there without spilling it everywhere. So, I'm just going to go ahead and pour off this lovely booze into these bottles. Right, and there we go. And as you can see, pretty much all the yeast is in the bottom there. It's a bit of wastage. I could let it settle out and rebottle it, but uh, I'm not going to, don't need to. So we now have two bottles that are fizzing slightly because it's also slightly degassing them. And now what we need to do, stick the lid on nice and tight. I'm gonna chuck these in the freezer. So I will see you in, uh, 12 hours time. See you then. So 12 hours have passed and our ginger mead is frozen solid. I mean, it is basically a solid chunk of ice. Now your freezer, maybe it's quicker, maybe it's slower. I mean, the freezers vary. So basically when it's frozen solid, it's good to go. As a general rule, it is 12 hours for anything under sort of 12% and 24 hours for anything over. That's just how it seems to work. So what I've got is uh, actually my pint glass. It holds a two liter bottle very nicely upside down. And that's basically what we need to do. So I'm just gonna open it like so. 
and it will squirt a little bit of the juice out. Oh yeah. Oh, a little bit of pressure. So basically, I'm just going to leave this until I have collected one liter, and uh, then I will repeat the process again. It's going to take a little while to do that, but it is a warm day, so hopefully it won't take too long. So it's been about three hours, three long hours watching this drip. So because I'm going to run out of time to get this video out today, if I don't do it, I'm going to do the other bottle in my spare time and I'm going to cut it a little bit short and just make a bottle's worth. I can collect this stuff and drink it at my leisure because I can. So we've got Honey Jack. That is what it is. It is Ginger Honey Jack. We've got a lovely sterile bottle. Everything has been sterilized, but it's really up to you. The stronger you make it, the less strict you have to be with sterilizing because after about 16, 18%, it preserves itself pretty much entirely. It's good to know. So our Ginger Jack is done. I'm just gonna pour a little, a little soup on because I just want to taste it before we play with it. So it went in at 6%. It should be somewhere around uh, 14, 15% now. Cheers. Wow. Woohoo! That tastes really good. Now it's concentrated everything. It is slightly higher in alcohol than I was expecting. So it tastes a little bit drier oh, than it did before. But it has a nice ginger flavor. It's gonna be good when we sweeten it. So, stir our funnel. Let's put it in the bottle because, well, even though it is higher than I was anticipating, it's not quite enough to sterilize itself fully. So, let's get it out. Get it out of the air. There we go. So we are gonna to have to back sweeten our honey jack. I guess it is a honey jack. Now, if you have made this and you've made it stronger to start off with, say you made this at like 15, 16% and are freeze distilling it instead of just bottling it and drinking it, highly suggest you use glycerin. Glycerin rounds off those rough edges and it's also a sweetener. It is indigestible, so if you added loads and loads into it, it would make you very regular. Oh yes, you'd be running, you'd have the galloping trucks. But this isn't that, you know, it's not that hardcore. So I'm gonna be using plain old sugar. It shouldn't have many of those rough edges. So I want to, uh, basically, I've got to guess. In the end, it took four teaspoons of sugar to get this to where I was happy with it because, well, that's, that's as many as it took. Now you can use honey if you really want to, if you want to be a purist. Uh, you can also use sweeteners, especially if you're going to be storing this long term, probably a sweetener or keeping it ice cold is the best way to go. But uh, since this is going to be drank this evening, I can go ahead and use sugar because it, it just tastes good and I, I have it. So I'm going to use it. So moment of truth. The great thing about this bottle is some of this is still coming off so I can just top up the bottle. Ooh. So I'm just going to pour myself out just a little bit because uh, it's good stuff. So it has a darker color than the original mead. Not by much, I have to say. But we didn't jack it properly. We didn't make it like a 45% set on fire type thing. Still, it smells really good. It's got a ginger head to it, almost like we used ginger. That's concentrated. Cheers. Wow. Ooh. I think we used just enough ginger. Any more and it would start getting fiery and it may not be for everyone's taste, but it is aromatic. It's got a nice heat to it. And then you get alcohol, almost like it's stronger. And then in the aftertaste, you start getting those floral notes that are coming through. 
good job for a bit of sweetness. I quite like it. Hmm. So, I sacrificed basically 50% of the alcohol that I could have possibly had to get one of these. And it's really quite nice. It just means we're going to have to play with uh, jacking more things. Could be fun. Hmm. I'm going to enjoy drinking that. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out some of the other ones and well, subscribe if you feel like it. Carry on homebrewing. See you later.